Thanks everyone for tuning into the stream. Remember, this is the furthest we've ever gotten with a hardcore character. If I just get a little more gold, we should be able to fight the Eye Cthulhu. Oh look, I think I see some. Wait, what? No, 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 no. Has this ever happened to you? Terraria is fun and all, but occasionally it pulls a move like that, and you're left thinking, wow, Terraria sure is a finished game. Of course, no game is perfect, and bugs, glitches, and exploits will slip through the cracks. That's not always a bad thing, though. Some glitches can provide hours of entertainment, and others can be used in creative ways to make some amazing things. This video is by no means a comprehensive guide covering every single little quirk in the game, because if that were the case, we'd be here all day. I'm not an expert on how all of these work, so if you want to learn more about anything featured in this video, there will be links to people that know what they're talking about in the description. I want to show off some of the ones I found interesting, from the small and insignificant to the stuff of nightmares. Ladies, gentlemen, and those of you that have ascended beyond the need for such labels, these are some ways you can break reality in Terraria. Walls, floors, and ceilings. Typically, these are boundaries that keep us contained, but in Terraria, they are merely a suggestion. These include methods of clipping inside and moving through solid walls. It can be so easy sometimes, they can even catch the occasional slime having fun with it. Don't believe me? Well, just pick up a grappling hook and find a small, one-tile-wide gap in a ceiling. Throw the hook into the gap, and you've broken the game. The best part is that you can keep climbing, so you can make passages that you can enter and enemies cannot. Some other clips you can perform involve using the stepping stool to jump through ceilings. One full-size tile and two platforms are all you need. Running shoes or dashing items like the Shield of Cthulhu can let you slip into floors. Bonk into a wall and let go of the movement keys with good timing and you'll slide right through. All of these methods pale in comparison to what's probably Terraria's most famous glitch, Hoix. Hoix are an old one, and if you've heard of any of the glitches before this video, this was probably it. Relogic saw all the things the community was making with them, so instead of patching it out, they said that it's not a bug, it's a feature, and now they fully endorse its usage. Hoix come in many different forms, typically with slopes and platforms, and most of them will cause you to zip around and pass through blocks. This can be used to make a whole bunch of contraptions, you could add conveyor belts to farms to make item and enemy transportation a breeze. What about secret entrances or elevators for your Terraria builds? One of the most practical uses for Hoix is completely bypassing the need for a key to enter the jungle temple. Just place three platforms like this, hammer them once so they are stairs, and then walk right through the door while holding down. You could even do this in free hard mode, so have fun being eaten by lizards several hours before you're supposed to. This is only the tip of the iceberg for Hoix. There are countless ways you can utilize them, and many pre-existing designs by the community that can help you get started. Better yet, experiment for yourself. See what kind of crazy shenanigans you can figure out. Terraria has a lot of wiring mechanisms for players that value efficiency, and teleporters are one of the best examples of this. These things are capable of saving you lots of travel time, and can also be used to make diabolical boss arenas. As of the 1.4.4 update, teleporters are sold by the mechanic, so players can get their hands on these wondrous devices earlier than ever. However, we're not going to use them for their intended purposes. For whatever reason, teleporters have a strange property that allows things to just... float? Stack some on top of each other, and then place down a furniture item. Break the teleporters from the bottom up, and when you get to the last one... Ah! Floating table! This works with most furniture items, but not containers like chests. They'll prevent the last teleport from breaking. You can use floating furniture for building purposes. Is your house missing that much needed floating chair? Well, now you can have one. This glitch has an interesting interaction with target dummies. Generally used to test damage per second and make false claims about a weapon's viability, we can use dummies to create what's called a phantom. There are two ways to make one. We can either stack teleporters and break them like we've been doing before, or we can just hook one up to some wires and activate them while the dummy's on it. The result is the same. If you try attacking the dummy, nothing will happen. If we shoot the empty space over here though, yeah, weird stuff. So the way target dummies work and allow you to hit them is that they have an invisible entity that's attached to them. Normally it can't move, but by using these glitches, we can disjoint the hitbox from the dummy, either by using gravity or by teleporting it. It's a lot easier to make out where the phantom is if we set it on fire. 
Does this glitch have any sort of practicality? Maybe. Since a phantom is an NPC, you can't build over it, so if you want to create zones where players can't build, try lining up a bunch of phantoms. It's messy, but hey, it's something. This next bug is less of a silly oversight by the developers, and more... Um, how do I put this? Well, we're taking Terraria and breaking its spine over our knee. This glitch comes in many forms. The transmutation glitch, the campfire glitch, the bast statue glitch. It's the newest addition to the game's library of glitches, and it was discovered by a lot of people. There are links to some of these videos in the description. This glitch is very technical, and explaining how it works is complicated, so I'll give you the abridged version. See this door? If you click it, it opens. In the game's files, the door sprites are stored in this sheet. But do you see these other doors? They're part of the same file, so if I were to place a different door, the game will instead grab sprites from this part of the sheet. However, if we perform a forbidden multiplayer ritual and create a desync, we can create this hell spawn of a bast statue, which causes tiles that have strange values. Using this, we can travel outside of the door's sprite sheet and into garbage data, where we weren't meant to access. Now by clicking on the door, we can cycle through different items until you see something that you want, and then BAM! We've turned a door into something valuable. Why does this work? Don't question it! We've just bent reality, and we will do it again. This isn't the only thing the desync glitch is capable of. We can use it to create pocket dimensions for chests and make storage that doesn't exist. If you redo the desync glitch with a few modifications, you can make this setup here. Instead of using a door and its sprite sheet, we'll be using this campfire. Normally chests with items inside them can't be destroyed, no matter what you do. It's a straight up rule in Terraria that prevents you from losing items. With this glitch, you can delete the chest from the world. Or so it seems. It may look like the chest isn't there, but a ghost of it is still present in the world. If you place a chest down in the same spot, all of the contents will magically appear. You can have hidden vaults, and store valuables away from greedy players. You can also break into locked dungeon chests way earlier than you're supposed to, and without spending an eternity grinding for keys. Break the locked chest, place it back down, and your prize is waiting inside. The transmutation glitch is one of the most powerful tools you have at your disposal. I wouldn't be surprised if it got patched out soon, so use it while you can. Terraria has been out for 12 years, and it's gone through many growing pains. Hundreds, if not thousands of bugs have been squashed over the years, and are no longer around today. For those of you that have a way of playing older versions of the game, you can try these out for yourself. These older glitches are still fascinating, so let me take you through memory lane, and revisit Terraria's glitch graveyard. No list of glitches is complete without one that lets you duplicate items. It was ridiculously easy to build, and you could mass produce anything you wanted. First, this could only be performed in a multiplayer world. Nobody else has to be on it, just be sure that you're hosting one. Then grab yourself four metal bars and place a chest on top of it. Break the bottom two bars and put down a workbench. Swap the chest for an item frame, then break the right side of the workbench and place down another item frame. Now any item you try to display in the item frame will shower you with endless duplicates of itself. Items aren't the only thing that can be duplicated. With just a few blocks, you could easily make fishing spots or just flood the world. This bug still exists in modern Terraria, but it was way more effective in older versions. Build a simple U-shape of blocks like this and hammer the edge. Just keep dumping water above the hammered tile and voila, you'll have enough lakes to satisfy this little gremlin. Is a boss too hard for you to beat? Do you wish that you could just skip it and not have to deal with, oh, I don't know, 10,000 goddamn lasers? For the low, low price of one king slime kill and your sense of honor, you can make a machine that makes you completely invincible to all attacks. The slime saddle has the ability to pogo off of enemies and makes you invincible for a brief moment while doing so. If we take two target dummies, hey fellas, welcome back, and put them under a low ceiling, you can bounce off of them endlessly. While in this state, your character is completely immune to damage. As long as you have the patience, any boss will be a breeze. Ropes are an early game utility and can help make your early caving adventures a lot safer before you have access to better mobility options. They act as strangely though if you built a very specific structure. By placing ropes up against some slanted tiles, if you climbed onto the rope and threw a grappling hook out at a specific angle... Oh, uh, bye! That's not my editing, by the way. The game just does that. 
Your camera will leave your character and fly off into the distance. And, uh, oh, th there goes the outro. I had something planned, but I can't really stop this. Well, uh, thanks for watching. Please yell at me in the comments about all the glitches I've missed.